This is how Tyrannosaurus rex may have moved, in the opinion of one of the new generation of dinosaur interpreters, Robert Backer of the Museum of Colorado. Okay, Tyrannosaurus rex, the most famous dinosaur, the most popular dinosaur. And here it is running at 40 miles per hour, faster than a rhino, faster than an elephant. This T-Rex is going faster than a lion. Yes, but that's your animation. How do you know it would go <laughs> as fast as that? Because of the way the muscles were hung on those leg bones, because of the way the calf muscles were hung on that knee, because of the way the massive thigh muscles were hung on that ilium. But why does that prove it was warm-blooded? Let's look at the real one, eh? Now, could it, could it really have reared up like that and lifted it Absolutely. immensely? Absolutely, and more. It could jump, it could run, it could run fast. This is a T-Rex, a real one, a cast, with a bloody big knee, right? But why does that mean it's got to be warm-blooded? Actually, it's the other way around. Because warm-bloodedness demands speed. This animal has to cruise fast, and it has to go into great bursts of speed, because it has to kill more often than a cold-blooded animal. There is no cold-blooded animal today with this great strength. None. This is not a scaled-up lizard. This is not a scaled-up tortoise. This is an enlarged, five-ton, meat-eating roadrunner. That's what it is. <laughs> and like a roadrunner, it's eating frequently. And there's another message, too, about speed in the skeleton, not in the legs, but in the chest. Because in the chest, there was housed in these ribs, without doubt, a gigantic heart designed to pump, designed to put out blood flow at emphatically warm-blooded levels. Uh, listen to this one. This is a pigeon. This is a horse. 